This story begins with one estate that is remote from the rest, and its owner has quite a few servants in his house. And then one day a man caught one of the maids in the hallway and prevented her from passing by leaning her against the wall. The girl tried to get out. It was all to no avail, however, for he was stronger than she was. And the man, insisting, asked, How many more times can she be told the same thing? He wanted her to finally become his mistress already, in which case she would be relieved of all her work. However, the maid tried to free herself from him, saying that she had a husband and child. So she couldn't and didn't even want to do it. However, the man insisted and told her to leave this beggar because he didn't deserve her. Then another maid with bright blue hair passed by, and when she saw the whole picture, she realized that she had to help. As she went to do her job, she had a bucket of water in her hands, so the girl quickly took it and splashed the entire bucket in the direction of the man and the maid. That at once suddenly jumped up and stepped aside. Then the girl lowered her head and said she was very sorry. She just wee on the floor and accidentally spilled water. The master, of course, got angry about all this. He took a swing at the girl and said that she was an empty-headed maid and could do nothing with her life. He also added that the girl, because of her infirmity, even wet her master's clothes. So he hit her with his fist, right on her face. So the girl even had blood coming out of her mouth. The maid savior could not keep on her feet and fell to the ground. Then he began to step on her with his boot and asked if she understood, for if not, he could replace her whenever he wanted. He shoved her one last time into his body and told the girl to be thankful in general that he hadn't thrown her out of the manor yet, though this wasn't a one-time thing he could do anymore. Lastly, he asked if she thought she would cry and he would immediately feel sorry for her. But it was not so and the man added that he would deduct the cost of his suit from her salary. When the gentleman left, a maid immediately ran up to her and asked Sapphira if she was in one piece and how she was feeling. The girl, wiping the blood from her face, said that it was fine, and she was on the contrary very happy that the maid was fine and that it would heal quite soon. When the maid heard this, she was very surprised. She turned to Sapphire and said with tears in her eyes that she had even helped her even though she knew she would get a pay cut because of it. However, the girl only smiled back at her and said that she was right and that she didn't see anything wrong with it. The girl smiled back at her and said that she saw nothing wrong with that. However, the maid asked that Sapphire had better take and get some rest, and she would take her job back, for she had helped and saved her there. When Sapphire rose to her feet, she immediately dusted off her white apron and thanked the girl for it. After that. The maid left to do her work. Then the girl looked out of the window and saw a self-satisfied gentleman going about his business. Sapphire put her hand to the point of impact and felt a sharp pain. She hadn't really expected him to actually do it. But the girl finally decided that she wouldn't let him do it again. When night came, the girl stood in the office, fully dressed in her special uniform. She held some papers in her hands and looking at them was glad because there was evidence of the theft. Sapphire also put on a special mask so she wouldn't be recognized, and after reviewing all the papers, she realized once again that she had achieved her goal after all. In fact, this great lord spends the taxes that ordinary people pay with sweat and blood very easily, and this annoyed her, for she knows how hard it is to labor day and night. Sapphire stood looking at some of the gems she had found in the lord's possession as she suddenly heard strange shouts from the hallway. It was the guards who were guarding the house. They ran toward the study and shouted the word thief. One of them added that the tax report had disappeared somewhere. Alarmed, his partner then asked, Is this really the work of an angel? They ran as fast as they could, for they knew that the girl could not be allowed to get away. At that moment, Sapphire put the papers in her pocket and jumped out of the window, thinking that he might think it was compensation for the beating, and she would get everything that belonged to the people back. In fact, the so-called angel steals in proof of law breaking by unscrupulous aristocrats. This man is an honorable thief who gives stolen goods to poor people who have had everything taken from them. She sneaks into the aristocracy as a maid so no one will suspect her. After that, she does her job. In fact, a girl named Sapphire Cromwell has one very big secret that she can't tell anyone. This is the activity that the girl does, mostly at night. 
doing good to people, and now that she jumped out of the window of the Duke's estate, was about to run away into the woods so that no one would catch up with her. However, just as the girl thought about the fact that she had succeeded in doing everything without anyone noticing her, some stranger came out of the bushes, and she was alarmed by it. She realized that she hadn't done everything cleanly. It was a little blonde-haired boy who was dressed in dirty pajamas and even had beatings on his face and body. For a while they just stared at each other, and Sapphire wondered, isn't he going to call for help since he noticed her? But the longer she looked at this strange boy, the more she wondered what was wrong with him. She assumed he was probably just lost somehow. Sapphire immediately waved a greeting to him and asked if he was all right. She decided it would be best to solve this problem with dialogue. However, at this point, the guy immediately began to cover his head with his hands and screamed, asking for forgiveness, and also asked that she just not hit him. At this point, he also cried. Sapphire immediately went over to him. She saw that he had fainted, however, and caught him so the boy wouldn't hurt himself. She would be even more amazed his last word before he fainted was again an apology. The girl was incredibly surprised, but then suddenly she touched his forehead, and even through the glove she felt the intense heat. She realized that he was on fire. For a while, Sapphire just stood there looking at him. After that, she picked him up and decided to take him with her, realizing that he needed immediate help. After a while, the girl found herself already in the city. She ran through the dark alleys as fast as she could, and the heat was coming out of the boy more and more, just as she was about to run out onto the avenue. She heard someone talking. It was the guards of the city, and they had seen the angel run out of the mansion, so they intended to capture her. The girl, looking out from around the corner, saw them. In her arms, she still held the small and maimed boy. The men were still running for a while, but then they suddenly slowed down. One of the guards asked, are they really talking about a noble angel? And then added that her costumes are quite popular with the common folk, so perhaps this is some false alarm again. However, their commander-in-chief protested and said that it was a thief anyway. And even if it wasn't an angel, they should still make a detailed investigation and find out. The boys ran after their chief, and one of them turned to the chief and said he was very serious, and that was commendable. But the man only replied that he was just doing his duty and nothing more. When Sapphire looked out from around the corner, she saw a man in uniform running toward the mansion. The girl, taking a closer look, couldn't believe it was really Police Chief Christ Galbraith himself. In fact, a special police force was created in that city. It was an organization that was made by decree of the king to control crime. It was mostly made up of all aristocrats. The organization itself was under the direct authority of the Prime Minister, and now Sapphire was almost certain that one of their officers had run past her, so the girl turned the corner and started running. She realized that they pay absolutely no attention to the crime of aristocrats, so she couldn't let anyone find her. And so a whole two months had passed since then, and that poor little boy was finally back on his feet and in very good spirits one fine sunny day. He sat at the table and raised his knife to the top, said that right now the knight would stick his sword straight into a lemon, and he'd be in trouble. Then with a sharp stab, he stuck his little knife right into the croissant, telling him to get it, and never think about crime again. But at that moment, Sapphire, who was sitting next to him, told David to stop doing that already, because it wasn't good to play with food like that. The boy looked at her in surprise. Then he began to eat his food saying that the White Lily Festival was coming soon. David smiled and said that when he grew up, he too would become a Knight of the White Lily and make his mom incredibly happy. The girl then smiled and asked, Has he already forgotten? And then she added that he wanted to meet his real parents and get to know them. But at that moment David suddenly made the most pitiful appearance and looked at Sapphire and called her mom and wondered, Doesn't she love him? The girl didn't expect him to be able to make such a handsome face, and was even confused for a while, but then quickly said that of course she loved him. David took another bite of the croissant and said that he could live like that. David took another bite of croissant and said that he could live like that. In fact, when she brought him home, he began to recover over time, but he never remembered anything about the past. David had no memory of the angel or his parents. There was only one name, 
and with this boy, Sapphire's life became much more interesting. Of course, with her thieving department, she had to hang on a little longer, but it wasn't as bad as one might think. And when the girl and David were having breakfast together, suddenly someone knocked on the door. She immediately went there and opened the door and asked who had come so early. But as soon as Sapphire saw Chris on her doorstep, she was incredibly surprised and simply froze. The man at this point bowed, apologized for coming to them so suddenly, and also introduced himself, saying that he was Christ Gilbert. Sapphire recognized him immediately. After all, he was the Duke, and also the Chief of Police. She did not answer him, for she did not know what to do or why he had come. After some time of silence, Christo called her name and asked if he had come to the right address. At this moment, Sapphire was very frightened. However, she tried to keep a combative look, thinking about the fact that she had probably been exposed. That was why he had come to her. They were silent for some time longer, but then suddenly, David's voice was heard peering out of the door, and turning to his mother, he asked who it was. Christ was very surprised to see the boy. He looked at him and shouted his name. David, when he saw the man, was very frightened. He immediately ran behind Sapphire's skirt, for he was very afraid of strangers. The girl was confused at this point, but then she asked what he even wanted and why he had come. Chris suddenly started yelling. He said that David was his own son, and she should give him up now. The girl, hearing this, was incredibly surprised. She didn't even know what to say to it, so she just stood there and kept silent. The man at this point began to explain that David had been missing for a year, and all this time he had been looking for him everywhere. He shifted his gaze to the boy and said he was incredibly glad he'd finally found him, and holding out his hand, he motioned for David to go home already. David moved further away from Krista and said that no, he wanted to continue living with his mom so he wasn't going anywhere with him. When Krist heard this, he asked in surprise what with mom meant. Then Sapphire had already spoken and said that she had saved this child when she found him all alone on the street and in no way kidnapped him. The man continued to look very serious. He said that the girl could not worry about it, because he would find out the whole truth by investigating. When Sapphire heard this, she was very surprised. In fact, she didn't want anyone to investigate at all, because then the truth might come out. But then all of a sudden, David screamed. He told the man not to mock his mother, for it was she who had saved him. Chris couldn't believe his eyes. In fact, he was still in shock that after all this time he could finally find his son, but he was disappointed by the boy's reaction. Then the man said that it seemed David didn't want to break up with the girl like that, so he might offer Sapphire a job at his house in order to make it easier for the boy to get over it. However, without hearing the police officer through to the end, Sapphire said confidently that she did not want to hear anything but refused at once. In fact, she had already spent quite some time working as a maid for various aristocrats, and that was only to gather information for her secret life. The girl usually didn't stay long, otherwise her face might be memorized, so there was no way Sapphire could directly work for the chief of police like this. Christ was silent for a while, and then he apologized. He said that it had been rude of him to hire his son's savior for nothing, and he understood that perfectly well. So the man confidently approached Miss Sapphire Cromwell and asked that she become his wife as well as the mother of his son. He said that David lost his birth mother fairly early on and his second wife treated him just horribly. And one day, when there was an incredibly bad thunderstorm, the boy simply left home after another beating from his stepmother. Christ said he feared all along that he had been kidnapped and has been searching for him every day and every minute of his life since. In fact, the man was incredibly sorry that he didn't immediately realize his wife's true nature, and this time, he should definitely listen to David's wishes so that he could finally live a happy life. So the man said, looking Sapphire straight in the eye, that he wanted his son to be with a man who was precious to him. At this point, he bowed and said that was why he was asking that the girl agree to his proposal. Sapphire was incredibly surprised, as well as David. The girl realized at that moment that he was very attached to her, and even considered her his own mother. The girl stroked his head and smiled as she realized there was no way she could just leave him like that. And besides, if she stays close by, she can watch the movements of the city police. Sapphira decided this would be a good opportunity for her, so she said she would accept. However, she would not be his wife, but only David's mother. 
Only on those terms would she agree. From then on, some more time passed, and they finally arrived at Duke Galbert's residence. As soon as the girl arrived there, she was immediately attended by servants. One of the maids brought tea for her, and the other asked that Mistress Sapphire let her fix her hair when something didn't look so pretty. However, at this moment, there was no way the girl could simply gather her thoughts or to perform any actions. Usually in these estates, she carries water, chops wood, and helps in the kitchen with cooking. In general, she does all the chores of a servant. And for the moment, Sapphire was very unaccustomed to having everyone fussing and fussing around her, bringing her new outfits and doing her hair for her. In fact, for the girl, it was like a new kind of top that she would have to get used to. One day they were sitting at a tea party with David, and the boy, seeing how upset she was, smiled and said he was very happy to be home with his mom. Sapphire smiled back at him and told him that she did too. And then she thought about the fact that of course she understood that he had lost his memory. But she thought that David had adapted very quickly to life as the Duke's son. At this point the boy turned to the maid and, smiling, said that the tea was incredibly delicious and asked if she could bring him some cookies. The maid liked very much the boy's polite request, and she bowed and said that of course she would bring it all to him now too. David rejoiced at once, but then suddenly the maid turned to Mrs. Sapphire and said that the bath would be ready very soon and inquired if she would need any help there. The girl, hearing this, was first very surprised that a bath was even being prepared for her, but then she added that if it was possible, she would like to go there alone. Soon the bath was ready and the girl went there, but of course she was not left alone in the bathroom. The girl was always in the presence of people for usually the wives of aristocrats do not wash alone. They are always assisted by servants. At times like this, Sapphire was constantly helping to change her clothes, and her wiping was embarrassing because it was too embarrassing for her. And so, as Sapphire was taking another bath, a maid walked past her to put some things away. The girl approached her and said that she was very grateful that they prepare a bath for her every day. So she says thank you very much to them, because they do their job very well. However, the maid smiled and said that there was really nothing to thank them for. At that moment, Sapphire shifted her gaze to the other side of the bathroom and seeing the shiny saucer, asked if this soap really shined like gemstones. Then the maid explained that all the bath soaps in the house had been specially made to the Duke's order, and this one had a distinctive scent. It was made using a flower that grows in a faraway land. Sapphire hearing this, wasn't really surprised. She picked up a bar of soap and began to examine it, thinking that this was to be expected of a duke. After all, even soap was made to order for the rich. She sniffed a small piece and told the maid that it was incredibly beautiful, and the scent was simply divine. Soon, Sapphire had finished her bath and was sitting in her robe in her room. But then suddenly, the other maids came running in, and started carrying something with them. As soon as they approached the lady, they opened one of the suitcases and said that it was all for her from the master. There were many different shiny and very expensive pieces of jewelry. Sapphire was startled when she heard this. She couldn't believe that this was really happening, because every piece of jewelry had gems in it. However, the maid was smiling at this point, and said that there must be something in this assortment that the mistress would find to her liking. She also smiled and said that since the gentleman was now her husband, she had decided to give it all to her as a sign of hospitality. At this very time, Christ was sitting in his office dealing with some work issues, and that's when he suddenly thought about his ex-wife. In fact, she, being incredibly greedy, always demanded a huge amount of jewelry. That was why the man gave Sapphire so much jewelry, hoping that she would show her true nature at once. Of course, he was very reluctant to test her in this way. But still, for David's happiness, he was obliged to go even to extreme measures. Then suddenly an assistant knocked at his office and, after apologizing to the gentleman, said that there had been some kind of kidnapping at the orphanage. Christ immediately got up from his seat and put on his jacket, saying that they were going there now. He thought at that moment that he could not afford to make the same mistake again. A great many hours had passed since he had gone to work and the man returned to his home when it was already very dark outside. In fact, he didn't really like it when he came back so late, 
And even though Chris had gone to the orphanage as soon as he'd heard the news, he hadn't been able to find the kidnapper. This criminal ran away too quickly without even leaving any trace behind him, and if the principal of the orphanage had been even a little more cooperative, the case would have gone much faster. At this moment, the man opened the door to his office to change his clothes and lie down to rest. But then suddenly, as soon as he stepped inside, he stopped in surprise. In fact, he was very surprised by Sapphire's presence in his office. She sat on the couch in the middle of the room and said she was glad he was back, because she had been waiting for him. The man looked at her in surprise. Then he asked what she wanted to tell him at this late hour. The man sat down across from her, and Sapphire said she wanted to talk to him about his hospitality. She also added that she had heard that there had been a kidnapping at the shelter and asked if he could talk a little more about it. However, Chris apologized and said he could not share such information with outsiders. But the girl objected and said that the principal of the orphanage hated aristocrats, so she definitely wouldn't cooperate. When the man heard this, he asked very surprised, Does she really know her, and where did she come from anyway? Sapphire explained that at first, when she worked a lot, she would leave David at the shelter until the end of the workday, in order for him to be looked after there. They have helped the girl a lot, so she wants to repay this orphanage for their kindness and help them in return. Christo, hearing this, objected and said it was better to let more experienced people handle it, and she'd better not get into trouble. When the girl heard this, she asked in surprise, And why does he think that at all, since she can't sit idly by when the children are in danger? Chris looked at her in surprise and pondered what he should do for a while, but then he gave up, and with a heavy sigh said he would tell her everything briefly. And he himself at that moment thought about the fact that this girl was different from other women he had dealt with after all. Tea was soon brought to them, and when the man told Sapphire everything, she said it was rather strange that the news of the kidnapping had reached him so late. The man agreed with her and said that this is why it is so difficult to find traces of the crime. However, what worries him most is that similar kidnappings are taking place in other orphanages. He also said that he had tried to find out something from the principal, but she was skeptical of the police and would not cooperate with them at all so the day had not yielded any results for him. Sapphire, hearing this, thought for a while about how this problem could be solved, and then suddenly, one very good idea occurred to her. When the girl spoke of having a thought, the man immediately jumped up from the couch and asked what that thought was, for he was really curious. Then she turned to the Duke and said that she didn't really need such expensive dresses and jewelry at all. Instead, he should donate the cost of the jewelry to this very orphanage. Chris, hearing this, was very surprised and asked if she really wanted him to donate all that money. Another night, he thought about the idea, but then he realized that it was the best option. So the next day, he and Sapphire arrived at just that orphanage. As soon as they entered, they turned to the nun and asked her to take them to the principal. The woman bowed and said that the principal would be right there and she asked them to go in and wait a little while. At that moment, Christ, passing by the window, suddenly looked out there and saw David playing merrily with the other children from the orphanage, and it surprised him very much. In fact, the boy, who had spent quite some time in this place while Sapphire was working, had gotten to know them and even liked them. When Christ noticed this, he immediately informed the girl. She agreed, and then looked surprised and asked him if he was sure he should have taken David with him on such an important mission. But the man only smiled and said that it was actually David's own wish, and he was sure the boy wanted to play with his friends. But at that moment Sapphire suddenly heard a very interesting phrase from the children. One of the boys said that he was a justice, an angel. The girl immediately turned around and looked in that direction. The boy was standing on the boxes and saying for the evil aristocrat to prepare to pay for his crimes. Then the little girl who was standing next to them immediately jumped up and said that she was next to play for the angel. Sapphire felt uncomfortable about this. She realized it wasn't a good time to play angel when there was a police officer present. Christ, also observing the whole scene, suddenly spoke up and said that angels had become quite popular among the common people. When the girl heard this, she was surprised to hear him say it. The man added that she was still a criminal and would certainly not escape execution if she was caught. Sapphire was immediately upset upon hearing those words, 
because she realized that nothing could change his mind, and that made her upset. She didn't really want to do anything wrong, but only wanted to help the ordinary people who had lost absolutely everything because of these aristocrats, but at this point continued to watch the children. He said that she was a hero to them, and of course it was impossible to ignore that. The girl heard this and was immediately interested. Then she turned to the man and said that it was not so easy to catch an angel since he was still walking free. Crystal, smiling, said that the investigation was progressing, and sooner or later they would reveal her true identity anyway. She certainly wouldn't be able to get away from them. The girl smiled back at him, but said nothing. In fact, she remembered the words when he had said that she would be executed if caught and realized that the best solution for her would be to simply not stand out among the others. Suddenly a nun came in. It was the principal of the orphanage. She apologized to the duke for keeping them waiting. The man approached her and thanked her for agreeing to cooperate with them. After all, it was very important to the investigation. However, the principal protested and said that she was actually grateful to him for such a generous donation, because it was very important for the orphanage. The man agreed, and she went with him there. The man agreed, and she went with him. Sapphire, however, remained standing outside with the principal. Then the old woman turned to her. She said that the donation before the White Lily Festival came in very handy. The girl then asked if the festival really needed that much money. The nun said that yes, because it is a rather costly festival that cannot be economized on. In fact, the White Lily Festival is a festival in honor of the guardian goddess of this country. A white lily princess, as well as a white lily knight, are chosen from the people. The knight pierces a lemon with his sword. Supposedly this takes away misfortunes from the people. And the princess of the white lily is washed with this very juice. And after that she presents an incredibly beautiful lily to the goddess, saying words of congratulations. All people on this day thank the goddess for the past year and pray for the well-being of the next year. And during the festival, People prepare sweets in the shape of lilies as well as lemons for orphanages. Such entertainment costs a lot of money, which they cannot afford. And that's why Sapphire decided that the Duke's donation would give them a chance to talk to the principal, because it was very important to her. The nun said after a while that aristocrats are quite arrogant and can't be trusted in any way. But she looked at Christ, who was standing by the window discussing something with another nun about her, and said he was the chief of police after all and then said that maybe she shouldn't have been so prejudiced against him, since he had made a donation to their home after all. And even if the man is an aristocrat, perhaps he could be trusted after all. When Sapphire heard those words, she was really surprised. In fact, she couldn't even believe that the principal, who hated aristocrats so much, could say such things. Then the girl suggested that maybe Christ really was different from all the other rich people. The next night the girl dressed in her usual uniform and went out into the garden of Galbraith's house. She looked around to see that no one could see her and decided that she could get away without being seen. Now the girl can absolutely not worry about the fact that she has to leave David completely alone and therefore with a calm soul she can return to her former work and help people. The principal had told them everything in more detail that day, so the girl had some information. Sapphire had learned about the orphanages where children had gone missing after all. And after learning this information, she realized that this was definitely an unusual abduction. And there is such a possibility that even high-ranking aristocrats may be involved. And at this point, going out like this into the night, the girl is taking a great risk because she could easily be caught. However, at that moment, Sapphire remembered the last words of her mother who while dying had told her to be strong and live honestly, helping those in need. Remembering these words from her mother, she looked up and was determined, for she was doing what she thought was right, so Sapphire must help these unfortunate children at all costs. As she made her way through the forest, she looked around and realized that first of all, she had to get out before she could be spotted, and just as she was about to pass on, she suddenly heard a rustle behind her and then a man's voice asking if anyone was here. At that moment, the girl was very frightened. She didn't expect to see the Duke at such a time and in such a place. Turning around, she jumped from surprise and asked what he was doing here. She realized that she had been found after all, 
Sapphire realized that if he found out right now that she was an angel, he would take her right on the spot and execute her while enjoying the scent of moonflowers. When Christ came closer, he saw the girl and wondered what she was doing in the garden at such a late hour. Sapphire simply remained silent for a while, while she looked around the area to come up with a plausible excuse. Then behind her the girl saw beautiful white flowers, and as she walked closer to them, she said that she was actually enjoying their beautiful fragrance. The duke was a little surprised, and when he saw the moonflowers, he said that in fact, because of their scent, such flowers are very often used in perfumery. The girl touched one of the flowers and said that was right. They have a sweet fragrance even during the day. But in the evening, the scent is even stronger, especially on a moonlit night like this. Sapphire smiled. She was incredibly beautiful in the moonlight. And when she was passionate about something, she became even more attractive. The girl said that they gave off a very strong scent when they were under the moonlight. Christo looked at her in surprise and then said that she knew a lot about them. The girl laughed and said that, in fact, she just really liked flowers, so she was learning a lot about them. Well, then the man suddenly looked her over from head to toe and asked her why she was dressed like that in such a case. Sapphire immediately made an excuse and said that it was because she was chilly in her light evening dress. However, she liked to be blown around by the breeze. That's why she chose such an outfit. Christ only said that he understood now, and the girl herself thought at that moment that if she needed a quick excuse, the excuse should be something very embarrassing. Then it would have to work anyway. After a short silence, the man looked at the girl and said that he already thought she wanted to meet her lover. Sapphire, hearing this, was very surprised and asked how he suddenly came to such a terrible conclusion. She also said that even though they are an unconventional couple, she still realizes that she is in the position of a duchess, so she would never do that. The girl also added that if she had a lover, she would certainly never marry him. Then Sapphire wondered if perhaps he just thought he shouldn't trust a commoner. Then it would become immediately clear to her. Well, then decisively she also said that she certainly wasn't going to do what she thought was wrong. And cheating, in her opinion, is wrong and improper. Christ, hearing this, was very surprised. Then he bowed and apologized, saying that he had been rude and that it was not nice of him. At that moment, Sapphire thought about the fact that he had accused her of cheating on him for no reason, and she was beginning to think that he was just as arrogant an aristocrat. But in fact, it is usually aristocrats who do not bow their heads to apologize when they are wronged, and most nobles do not care about the feelings of commoners. However, Sapphire still thinks that she has managed to find a very good excuse after all, and he will not suspect her of being an angel. So the girl, smiling, said that she accepted the Duke's apology, and also explained that she liked to take walks at night, so he might not be surprised if he saw her later in the garden. She also said that he could trust her, and she swore that she would never cheat on him as long as they were married. Chris smiled and waved his head, saying that of course he didn't doubt it anymore. But then he suddenly added that calling her lawful husband by his title was kind of weird of her. So he asked that she call him by his first name, and they switched from a more formal manner of conversation to a casual one. Sapphire was very surprised at such a suggestion, and they began to set off towards the castle. The girl said that she was not really his wife, but rather David's mother. However, Chris, smiling, said that she didn't have to worry about that, since he would also just call her by her first name. It was the right thing to do. The girl had no choice but to agree to the proposal. The next morning when Sapphire woke up, she was walking through the castle and thought about the fact that she had almost gotten caught at that moment, but she wondered why the Duke had even suspected her of cheating, since there was not even a hint of it. Then she suggested that perhaps it was indeed strange enough that she was in very light clothing at night. But he's kind of like the chief of police, and so he shouldn't jump to conclusions until he finds ironclad evidence. But nevertheless, Christ had rushed to the extreme without even learning all the details, and the girl wondered why exactly he had reacted that way, so she decided she would have to find out more about it. At this time, the kitchen was preparing food for breakfast, and one of the chefs said that the gentleman's new wife was not at all like the last one had been, and this surprised him pleasantly. The maid who helped cut the chief's food said she agreed because his wife's past wife, Irene, was just a horrible woman. 
The chief also said that even after marrying with the duke's back, she dated several men at the same time. At this moment Sapphire was just passing by them and was able to hear this conversation. And that day, while walking even just down the street, she also overheard a conversation about two men who tended horses. One of them said that some of the men even had wives and children. And besides all this, poor young Mr. David received a great deal of insults and even abuse from her. The other maids, who were sweeping up the leaves outside, said that when the master found out about it, he told her sternly that it was the greatest mistake when he thought she could love someone. When Sapphire had gone around the house and looked over the entire grounds and heard the conversations from the servants, she sat on the swing that stood in the garden in the evening and realized that his ex-wife was still that idiotic and insensitive woman. The girl at this moment also thought that if she had such a past husband, that she too would surely suspect her new husband when she saw him in the garden at night of some infidelity. And it was clear to her now why he had immediately thought of this terrible act. In other words, the duke had a distrust after his second wife of all women. However, in spite of this, he still proposed marriage to him to a commoner girl he met quite unintentionally. And Sapphire was surprised that he was willing to do such things, to go over and above for David's sake. But it delighted her, and she realized that the duke was a very good father if he could make such sacrifices. So the girl decided that if she wanted to leave this place and divorce him, she needed to first establish a relationship with her son so that she could hide in the darkness with peace of mind. The next day, the duke gathered them all around the same table so they could figure things out and talk things over. Of course, Sapphire was the first to suggest it because she was really determined to fix their relationship. David sat across from his father and looked at his face in surprise not understanding why he had to be in this place right now. The girl realized that she needed to nudge Chris to at least say something already, so she looked at him and told him to start doing something. The man became very uncomfortable. He coughed. Then, looking at his son, he asked David if he really didn't remember him. The boy still said in the same surprised way that he did not remember him. He said that he was his father. The boy said that he remembered all that because the man had already said so when they first met. Well, after that they just sat there looking at each other in awkward silence. Sapphire didn't realize what was going on. She hadn't even realized it would be so hard to make conversation. The girl thought, Is it serious? After all, they have not seen each other for a year, and the Duke has nothing to say to his son. He just sits there like an idiot. Sapphire knew that while she was out of this place, she needed to find a way to improve the father-son relationship. So she stood up from the table and turned to Christ. She started to walk up to the Duke and said she was going to show him an example. So she asked him to do as she said. The man looked at her in surprise and asked what kind of example she was talking about. The man then got up from the table and repeated the motion after the girl, that he and she sat down on one knee and just looked at each other being very close. Chris didn't really understand what was going on, or what she was even up to, because their faces were incredibly close and he could see every spot on her face. But then Sapphire, smiling, told him to listen carefully and to remember that when talking to children, you need to have a look that is so soft and friendly in order for them not to be frightened and to take it seriously. The girl also said that even adults look at people's faces when they talk to them. That is why it is necessary to keep the facial expressions soft so that children feel comfortable. Chris did his best to repeat after her and said he had it all memorized. But then the girl suddenly turned toward David and stretched out her arms, inviting him into her embrace. When the boy saw this, he immediately got excited and ran to meet her, calling her mom. Then they began to hug gently. David was very happy to be in her arms and to feel her love and care. After a while, Sapphire turned to David and asked him why he was so cute every day. The boy replied cheerfully that it was because she loved him. The girl was a little confused hearing this, but afterwards she hugged him again and told him that he was incredibly sweet and she just adored him. Christ, watching all this, was a little shocked. He asked in surprise, Does the answer to that question have to be right too? However, Sapphire suddenly frowned and said that it didn't really matter how he answered. The main thing was that he should try to allow himself as much tactile contact as possible so that the child wouldn't feel lonely and unwanted, like an abandoned person. 
Christ at that moment suddenly remembered that David had always been a very even-tempered and obedient boy, but he didn't remember him ever smiling when he lived with his father. Then the man came to the conclusion that apparently he was really somehow misbehaving around his son, because with this girl he is right, so disappear all his happiness. Then suddenly the man spoke up and said in a sad voice that he hadn't even noticed before when he was lonely. Sapphire set David on the ground and looked at Chris and told him not to make the same mistake again in that case, but instead to correct it. She also said that she is sure that he will definitely be able to convey all his feelings to David and understand and accept him for who he is. They are a family, after all. Christo smiled as he heard this, for he had a new topic of conversation. He turned to Sapphire and asked her what her family was like, for he wondered how on earth she knew all these nice tricks. But the girl calmly replied that her father had died quite early, and she had to live alone with her mother. She said that their life could not be called very simple. However, despite all this, her mother was able to give a lot of love to her daughter. And even despite her meager financial situation, her mother always found a way to pamper Sapphire by buying her a new dress, or making one herself. Well, her mother had once protected the girl when she was almost run over by an aristocrat's carriage. Unfortunately, the woman didn't survive. Christ, hearing this, was very surprised. He didn't even know what to say, and the girl continued her story. She said that she had sat by her dying mother's side and asked for help from the aristocrats who had done all this. However, the aristocrat sitting inside only cared that her carriage was soiled in the blood of a commoner, and so she simply left the scene without helping her mother. From then on, Sapphire began to hate all aristocrats and decided that someday she would definitely take revenge on them for everything they had done to her precious mother. But the moment she was almost consumed by the desire for revenge, her mother told Sapphire not to do it. And dying, lying on the pavement at the hands of aristocrats, she said that if she hated them, she would be no better than those who hated ordinary commoners. Her mom squeezed her daughter's hand with a trembling hand, told her they weren't worth it to smear her hands and conscience on them. She told the girl to be strong and live right as she should. At that moment, the woman let out her last breath from her lungs, and the girl, seeing this, burst into tears even more. In fact, in their world, there is a huge gulf between the rich and the poor. That is why Sapphire has become a thief, a.k.a. an angel. She punishes the bad aristocrats who steal from ordinary and innocent people. Their ill-gotten wealth should be for the benefit of the poor, who need it even more. Of course, Sapphire didn't tell the police officer that, and after some time of silence, she added that she still disliked aristocrats. However, she believed that one shouldn't judge people just by their status. She stroked David's head in reassurance and said it was important to understand what kind of person he was. That's what her dear mother had taught her. The girl looked at the man and smiled and said that she had kept the promise she had made to her before she died and would be strong and live right no matter what. Chris, having listened to her story, said that he understood everything now. But the girl felt uncomfortable, because she realized that she had said a lot of unnecessary things to some aristocrat, and she should not have done it. So the girl immediately apologized, saying that she didn't mean to offend him in any way. However, the man only replied to this that the girl had a wonderful mother who was a very wise woman. Sapphire, hearing this, was very surprised and asked what he meant by that. Then Chris said that she protected her at any cost to her, and even at the cost of her life and on top of that, prevented her from going down the path of revenge. He smiled and said one last time that everything she did, she did it only for her daughter's sake, and he was sorry that such a noble person had died. The girl, hearing this directly, was ready to cry. In fact, she said rudeness, and the man did not even get angry about it. In addition, he ended up even praising her mom for such words the girl came to the conclusion that Christ is an aristocrat so he should be primarily on the side of aristocrats. But for all that, he does not oppress the girl just because she is a commoner. At that moment, the man sat down opposite his son, who came closer to him, and Chris stroked David's head. The girl thought that maybe he was just the person she could trust. But then suddenly, the man turned to the sapphire and said that he had a favor to ask the girl who was still admiring the way he was stroking David, asked what kind of favor it was. The man glanced at her and said that he wanted her to be his partner at the next ball and he meant it. And the girl, hearing this, 
was incredibly surprised and asked if he really wanted it to be her. The girl immediately said that she had never been to a ball in her life and asked if a girl he cared about should be invited to such events. In addition, Sapphire also thought about the fact that taking a commoner that you would divorce later would not make any sense at all, but would only embarrass you. But then all of a sudden Chris smiled and said that was the reason he wanted her to be at the ball just like his wife. The girl had to accept her fate the next night she climbed out the window and no one noticed her. The girl went straight to some aristocrat's mansion. And at night, while Sapphire was looking through some papers for proof, she realized that she had managed to get out of the mansion after all, and she could finally continue her activities with peace of mind. But soon the girl closed the book, realizing that there was no information about the kidnapping in it, and it even upset her a little, because she thought that this house would be her clue. After a while, Sapphire left the house, wondering why Chris had asked her to the ball after all and really hoping that none of this would affect her work. In fact, a few days ago, when Chris did invite the girl to the ball, she was very surprised. But the man said that she was after all the mother of David, his son, and therefore the duchess of her house of Galbraith, which meant that she was also his wife. The girl said that it all made sense, of course, but she didn't want to take it into account. But then suddenly Krista became very sad and asked, Is she really against it after all? for he had hoped so much that she would agree and they would have a good evening. Sapphire, seeing his sad face, immediately realized that it was very similar to when David begged for something, so she had no choice but to agree. The man immediately became cheerful and thanked her for the favor. And now, as the girl was returning home from her mission, she was reminded of all this and realized that she could not refuse people when they had such a pitiful look in their eyes. Some more time had passed since that moment, and the girl was sitting with David in one of the rooms where there were many different outfits, fabrics, and sundries. Since she had agreed to go to the ball with the Duke, she had no other choice. But she was still confused about one thing. Sapphire didn't realize if it really took that much preparation. She was sitting in a room where there were many different luxurious dresses, apparently, from which she had to choose the one she would wear to the event. A maid approached her and provided a display case with various earrings. She said it would be her first ball, so they should dress her as befitting a duchess of the house of Galbraith. After that, another maid also approached Sapphire, holding out a new piece of jewelry, and said that after that they would test her knowledge of etiquette and dancing skills. The girl was a little confused, but since she had agreed to this adventure, she had to follow the rules. She realized that now she was a duchess and she could not relax. While the girl was choosing different earrings that she would like, David suddenly got up from his chair. He walked over to the mannequins who were wearing gorgeous dresses and called out to his mother. The boy stopped at the blue one and said that this dress would be perfect for her. David looked at him with a loving look and said she'd be really cute if she wore it to the ball and outshone everyone right there. Sapphire thought that was very nice and immediately thanked the boy for such compliments. Then she looked at the dress and said that in that case, they would take the one David had chosen. The maids, seeing this dress, immediately said that they also agreed with his choice. After that, the girl had to do whatever the maids asked and showed them her knowledge of etiquette. She held her tea mug correctly after dinner, wiped her mouth with the right hand, and even curtsied like a proper lady. And when the maids saw it, they were amazed. One of them said she was worried that there would be trouble since she was from the common people. However, Sapphire's doing fine, even better than the other aristocrats. The girl, upon hearing this, asked in surprise, Is that really so? And thanked them for noticing. In fact, the girl still benefited from what she had seen working for aristocrats, and each time she was a maid, she memorized all their manners and behavior. But then suddenly the maid said that they would now have a dancing lesson, and a man arrived shortly, and she, introducing him, said it was her tutor. Sapphire greeted him with a curtsy, and they began their lessons. Soon the duke came to them, and, turning to the maid, asked how Sapphire was doing. He also said that he had heard rumors that she was actively preparing for that very evening. The maid, smiling, said that was correct. She also added that Mrs. Sapphire is doing fine, and there is no problem in manners. Then she stepped aside and showed Sapphire along with the dance teacher twirling in the motions and said that she was learning just how to dance now, 
As they twirled in a dance, the teacher said that it would be easier for Miss Sapphire to step if she shifted her center of gravity to the left. The girl tried to do as the teacher said, and asked if she had done so. The maid suddenly added that she thought that the lady had some difficulties in dancing, but that it could be remedied because she was being taught by a professional. Christ, watching all this, suddenly frowned. He walked over to the girl and stopping their dance, asked, Is she having trouble dancing? The girl, seeing him, was very surprised and said hello. But then suddenly the man, coming straight to the point, suggested that he become her partner while she was studying. Sapphire said that she hadn't even learned any moves for a long time yet, and thought to herself that she didn't want to stomp the duke's feet the first time. However, the man protested, and said that he had asked her to go to the ball with him, so he should take charge and teach her how to dance properly. Sapphire already wanted to object, but the teacher suddenly intervened in their conversation and said that the duke was very right and there was nothing to be embarrassed about. The girl had nothing to do but agree, and they got into a pose to dance, but in fact she thought that since her tutor said so, she would still agree to this opportunity. David who had been sitting next to his mom all this time watching her study with even more amazement as he watched her dance with his dad. The man and the woman immediately spun in a dance. The girl was a little embarrassed by the whole situation, and she thought about the fact that with the tutor, they certainly did the same moves. However, she is somehow much more worried than she was that time. And now as she looks into the duke's face, she only noticed at this moment how beautiful it is after all. In fact, now that he was so close to the girl, Sapphire would finally be able to get a good look at him. They continued to twirl in the dance, and the girl was doing very well. When they finished, the tutors immediately applauded and said that it was a great dance, and for that day the lesson could be over because she had already done a very good job. Then the cross approached her and asked if she had already chosen a dress for herself. The girl immediately said yes, and looking at David, added that it was he who had helped her to choose it. The boy immediately agreed with this with joy, and the man looked at him surprised and asked, Did David really help her do it? Sapphire nodded, but then suddenly the man asked if he could pick out a dress for her for the next ball. When the girl heard this one, she was very surprised, and wondered if he also wanted her to come to the next ball. However, Christ put his hand on his chest and bowed, and said that if she suddenly had any problems at the ball, she could feel free to go to him. There was nothing shameful or ugly about it. Sapphire became a little uneasy and she started to worry, but still agreed she was really the only one trying to protect the rest of the humans from the horrible aristocrats up until this point. And poor little David, whom she had vouched for and put on his feet. But now, even though the Duke had said she could rely on him, the girl still doubted she could just do it. At that moment Davida suddenly started from his chair and ran up to his mother. He hugged her and told her that if she suddenly had any problems, he would definitely help her too. The girl laughed and thanked him. She stroked his head and thought about the fact that she was his mother now after all, and therefore had to fulfill the role of Duchess. But despite all that, she still absolutely had to be much more careful. And besides, she will be at a ball where quite a few aristocrats will gather. And maybe she can even gather some information about the kidnapping of poor children from the orphanage. Sapphire realized that right now she had no time to be distracted by any unnecessary pursuits, and she had to do what she could for the sake of these innocent poor things. At this time, in Baron Tolkman's residence, the girl with blonde hair suddenly read the letter that had come to her, and glared, smiled, and tore it open, thinking that Christ suddenly had a new wife. Soon the long-awaited day of the ball finally arrived. Everyone began to gather in Duke Galbert's mansion to go to the right place. The man put on his smart suit and was just putting on the last touch. It was gloves. But then he was suddenly approached by Sapphire, who had come downstairs with David. They were also incredibly beautiful and richly dressed. The girl apologized to him for waiting but said that it would not happen again. When Chris saw the girl he directly froze, and he did not expect her to be so beautiful and enchanting. But soon the man was able to master his mind, and smiling said that this dress suited the girl very well, and apparently David had not made a bad choice. Sapphire looked a little embarrassed, but then thanked him, saying that the suit suited him just fine too. It was an awkward enough conversation, and David watched with a strange expression on his face. At this point, 
The girl thought about the fact that even though she was well aware of all the etiquette, she still felt awkward when she was praised, especially by Christ, for anything, especially when complimenting her on her looks or something like that. But at that moment, David was suddenly angry. He hugged the girl and said that you can't do that because it's his mom. He must have been very jealous of the Duke. But at that moment, Sapphire crouched down to be at David's eye level and wondered why he was reacting that way, but realized she couldn't stay mad at him for long. So she hugged him and told him that he was very sweet, and she adored him. But at that moment, a maid suddenly ran up to her, who began to shout, addressing her mistress, and told her to get up at once, for the dress was wrinkled and it would look ugly. Christ, watching all of this, suddenly frowned. He thought about the fact that when he was very young, he was not even allowed to hug his own mother, let alone show any other tenderness. But then suddenly he smiled as he watched David continue to hug the girl, and thought about how at this moment he was lucky after all to have met this beautiful lady who loved him so much. The man was glad that after his horrible second wife, David was finally feeling the love he deserved, and he was sorry he couldn't show it himself. When evening came, everyone finally began to arrive at their destination, where the ball was just about to begin. There were already quite a few of the various aristocrats gathered there, and finally Christ, along with Sapphire, arrived there as well. It wasn't until the girl stepped inside that she looked around and realized that, as expected of a ball thrown by the Duke, there were quite a few high-ranking aristocrats gathered in the place. But at that moment her attention was suddenly drawn to a conversation that was taking place nearby. The girl immediately stared in that direction. Chris noticed it and looked at her in surprise. But because the girl didn't avert her gaze, he suddenly turned to her and asked if everything was all right. Sapphire hadn't expected him to notice, and she jumped with fright, but then apologized saying that she was just a little unused to this environment. But the Duke smiled and replied that she could get used to it quickly, so she could take it easy. But at this moment, the man who was standing not far from them was also an aristocrat, and seeing their conversation, suddenly sighed heavily, saying that he cared so much for his new wife. Christ, hearing this, was immediately alarmed and asked if it was so strange. But the man replied that it was not at all. For a serious man like him it was very good. Then he turned to the girl and asked her if she was living in a fairy tale with such a man. Sapphire didn't know what to say to her, so she just stood there silent. She felt very embarrassed that she even blushed. Christ, at this point, coughed to break this awkward silence and said that the girl could ignore him because he just didn't know what he was saying. The man, who was standing nearby and himself becoming embarrassed, apologized to the Duchess, saying he still had some things to discuss with her husband. Sapphire was glad that the man was finally going to leave, and smiled, and said that she would wait in this particular spot, and the man could have him for a few minutes, but only with a return. Christ gave the girl one last smile and told her that he would be back very soon, so she could take it easy. When they were left alone, the men began to discuss something heatedly, and stepped aside so that no one could hear them. Sapphire, left alone, looked around again and realized that she could absolutely move around now, so she should get busy gathering information for herself. In fact, nothing was yet known about the whereabouts of the kidnapped child, and there was a high probability that the case was related to the human trafficking that many aristocrats engaged in. So on this day, the girl will have a chic opportunity to socialize with them, and, if anything, to find out who can do such a thing. Just as Sapphire was about to step aside, she heard someone coming up behind her and saying hello, and it was the girl who had read the letter the previous evening. She said hello to the Duchess and asked if she had gotten her name right. The girl looked at her in surprise and did not understand why this stranger suddenly approached her, but after that, embarrassed, asked who she was in general, of course, observing all the norms of etiquette. The stranger smiled and said that she was Irene Tolman. Sapphire thought about it, but in fact she realized that she had heard the name somewhere before, but she couldn't remember where. She remembered that she was the one the servants in the house had been discussing. She wondered if she was Christ's ex-wife. But then suddenly, a lady who was passing by them immediately became indignant and said that it was very rude to address her in such a manner, and one should not say such a thing to a highly honorable lady. 
The other girl agreed with her and said that after all, it was the Duke of Galbraith who loved Lady Irene, and it was very ungracious of her to speak like that. The ladies also continued to talk, claiming that his son had only taken and disappeared because the servant hadn't finished looking, and Lady Irene wasn't to blame for anything. 